Welcome. Welcome back to the Solution Series, brought to you by Double Radius and hosted by yours truly, Jeff Holdenred. Today, I am joined by Caleb Nauer with RF Elements. Hey, everybody. So, RF Elements is an antenna manufacturer, and we know there's a lot of different options out there. So, Caleb, what are some of the things that make y'all different? So, at RF Elements, our mission is to redefine industry standards in three main areas. Noise mitigation, RF performance, scalability for WISP wireless networks. So, when we talk about noise mitigation, you know, can you explain a little more about where your technology takes you with that? Yeah, sure. So, as we all know, noise is bad, okay? So, one of the major sources of noise are WISP's use of traditional patch array sectors. Your traditional patch array that we've known and dealt with over the years, you know, 90 degree or 120 degree or whatever, tall, kind of wide. Um, the problem with those solutions is that they are very noisy and that they have side lobes and back lobes. So you've got a main beam where your host and your main coverage area is, but you have these side lobes and back lobes where you're not only sending out noise and polluting the airspace, but you're also receiving noise from those locations. Whether it's other APs on the tower, maybe it's other locations, or wherever the noise is coming from, you're picking up that noise. That's very bad for performance because you're picking up all this external noise and it's really messing up your SNRs, your data rate, so on and so forth. The way we fight that is with our horn antenna technology. And in this horn technology, what we've done is we've been able to completely remove the side lobes and the back lobes and focus all that energy on the main beam coming out of this radio or out of this antenna. So that beam efficiency, that measurement of how much energy is coming out of there, really, really high on horn antennas. And that's really important to get the performance that you want. Now there's other factors at play as well and kind of play into the RF performance side of things as well. So, you know, most people focus on the horns because of the side lobe and the back lobe reduction, but there's so much more to that. So with our horn technology, you're able to keep your patterns very stable as you move across the whole frequency band. You're keeping the polarization pattern stable between your horizontal and your vertical so you don't get all these goofy uh, chain mismatch errors and stuff like that. You're keeping your gain flat all the way across the frequency range, which is important. So most folks that are using patch array sectors, they don't even know that as they change channels, this pattern is moving around a little bit differently shaped, your game might be going up and down. It's just kind of a mess. So horns allow you to fix those issues and get the most efficient performance you can get out of your antenna. Now there's other things that we do as well to improve the RF performance. It also plays into the scalability as a fact. Biggest part of that is using our twist port and twist port adapter ecosystem. So you can see here, this twist port adapter uses our twist port, which is how it locks into the antenna, to convert an RF connector on a radio to waveguide. Really easy to use too. All you do is put it together, clicks in, rotate, lock in, now you're done. You've attached your radio to your antenna with virtually zero RF loss, no goofy pigtails to worry about, no weatherproofing, you don't have to worry about birds sitting on them or eating them and all this other stuff. So that really improves the RF performance, makes for a quick and easy install, and gives you a lot of flexibility. Uh, maybe you're migrating networks, for instance, right? This twist port really comes into the migration side of things uh, and also the scalability of things. So what I mean is, let's say you're moving from one network technology to the other, one vendor to the other however you want to look at it. So you're using Cambium and you're going 2000s over to the 3000s, or maybe 3000s to 4000s next year. Maybe you're using Ubiquity and you're going from Prism AC to LTE. Maybe you're using Mimosa and you're moving to their new AX series. You don't have to replace your whole antenna and your whole ecosystem on the tower up there to move to these new technologies. All you do is get your new radio, pop it into either the same twist port adapter or a new one if required, Lock it in, pull the old one off, throw the new one on here. Now you're off to the races. So it makes for a real quick and easy migration path and plays a lot, like I said, into the scalability and deploying different horns and different antennas on the tower. So you mentioned scalability, right? So what are some of the other options you offer, you know, or what are some of the options that you do offer in your products? So with the horns, we've got 11, 12 different sizes or versions, iterations. I can't keep count, but uh, so we've got a couple of main product categories. The first one being our symmetrical horns, this little fella right here. So symmetrical horn has a pattern in the azimuth and elevation that are very similar. They're symmetrical, they're the same. You got our asymmetrical horns, 
where the azimuth is wide and the elevation is relatively narrow. Um, sort of similar to a, a sector style, but with all the benefits and stuff I mentioned before. This is, this is actually a really popular product for us, and you guys sell a whole ton of them. And isn't this one you just won an award for? It is. I'm glad you mentioned that. <laughs> so we've won Whisper Product of the Year for the Asymmetric Horns for the last three years. So 1920 and now 21, we found out in Vegas a few weeks ago we won. So we're super proud of this. We're super humbled. Thanks to everyone that's put on the work. Thanks to everyone who voted for our product, continues to use it. I mean, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys. So thanks a ton. Now, we've also got other products. We've got our Ultra Dishes, which over here, those support the twist port. But we've also got a variety of other products. So we've got our starter horns, our starter dishes, our low cost entry point to use in our ecosystem. We have our array sectors. We talk a lot of smack about arrays, or excuse me, patch array sectors. We actually do offer some sectors though, but they've been optimized to be the performance, you know, potential, the best sort of performance that you can really get out of a sector. So you're not getting this from the competition with our back shield tech and our beam balancing and stuff like that. Uh, it's a great value and it's super effective in areas where you use a sector, maybe really rural areas or spread out, you're covering long distances and stuff. Um, but we've also got some crazy options. We've got our Ultra Horn. Uh, traditionally, it's used for doing point to point, uh, but we're seeing more and more usage of that now for people that are doing really high density sectors. So this bad boy's got a 15 degree spread on the main beam, which means you could put up, you know, if you put up 10 of them, you're covering 150 degrees of area. So what that means is, is you could do really high dense sectors, load them up really well. The higher gain gives you a lot more ability to do further distances and things like that. Cut out all that noise. So we've got a lot of options, a lot of different ways to deploy things. You can mix and match these however you want, right? So maybe, you know, you've got a tower, we've got a lot of density to the north, but not much on the back, mm -hmm. right? You could run 20 degree, 30 degree sectors up the front. Maybe in the back, you put up an array sector, or maybe you need a little bit of coverage, you throw up a 90 or a 60 or something like that. So a lot of different options available, a lot of different ways to swing at hammer, and we're just giving you more tools in the toolbox to give you the best deployment options that you've got available. Thank you. So besides actually reaching out to your double radius sales rep to learn more about this, what other resources do you guys have available? So definitely the first person to reach out to would be your rep. You know, double radius is a great partner for us. We've been working together for years. They're all well-trained. They know how the products work and how to deploy. If you've got direct questions, you want to talk to us about it, uh, you can find us on our website, rfelements.com. Check out our link calculator there, very powerful tool that'll help you determine what horn you want to deploy and the signal levels you should expect and the coverage you should expect. But we've got some more resources. We've got a YouTube channel, which is our Inside Wireless, which is where we do a lot of sort of general wireless training. We have a podcast now mm -hmm. uh, where Tassos and I talk about all sorts of different facets of the WISP industry and solutions are available. Uh, and you can reach out to me directly, Caleb at RFLMS.com. They'll take you straight to me, and I'm more than happy to answer any questions you may have. By the way, I've really enjoyed the podcast. So you Thank guys you. are doing a great job. Thank with you. That. Thank so, you, Mike. So these products are all available at Double Radius. We're actually stocking these at all three of our warehouse locations across North America. But like we said, you want to reach out to your sales rep, reach out to RF Elements directly, ask questions, you know, and hopefully this segment has been something that you've all learned something new. Thank you for enjoying the segment. Caleb, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. And until next time, have a wonderful day.